Smartcast. You're listening to a Hindustan Times production brought to you by HD Smartcast. Hello. These are the top news for the day. As Joshima is battling a gradual sinking of the land with several structures being identified as dangerous to live in. The government on Wednesday said compensation will be given according to market value to the owners of the establishments which will be required to be demolished. As of now, only the two hotels, Milari Inn and Mount View Hotel, are to be demolished and the government will complete its survey of the condition of the houses within a week. Residences in Joshimat, the town at an altitude of 6,107 feet, started reporting cracks in December which turned into a major catastrophe within days, though subsidence of land is not a new issue here. The demolition of two hotels was stalled on Tuesday owing to the resistance of the hotel owners who claimed to be caught off guard by the sudden developments and said they were not informed by the administration. Amin Akshi Sundaram, secretary to Uttarakhand Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Army, held a meeting with the residents and owners of establishments which have been damaged in Joshimut subsidence to discuss the issue. The Uttarakhand government has announced 1.5 lakh interim relief to affected families who have been shifted out from their residences in the wake of the Joshimut disaster. Sundaram said Malari Inn and Mount View Hotel will be demolished because they now pose a danger to the surrounding structures. These two buildings will crumble and will pull down another 15 to 20 structures, Sundaram said adding that people have been asked to give applications on their own if they fear that their structure will collapse. Our evaluation team is evaluating all houses so that we have the measurement of every house in case they come down. We are giving 1.5 lakh to the families who have been moved out of their residences so that they can shift to any comfortable area with their belongings, Sundaram said. When visionary Manohar Parrikar was the Defence Minister of India, he had suggested to then Navy Chief Admiral Robin K. Dhawa that Indian Navy should exercise the option of three more Calvary, Skopney, class rather than go for fresh acquisition of six of Project 75I, Air Independent Propulsion Equipped, Submarines. Admiral Dhawa did not agree because of which the options clause for Project 75, which was approved by Atal Bihari Vajpayee government way back in 2003, was cancelled in September 2016. On July 20, 2021, the Ministry of Defence floated a request for proposal, RFP, for a E-equipped six Project 75 I-class submarines at the cost of 40,000 crore. Since it is normal for Indian military civilian bureaucracy to take at least 10 to 15 years to complete any big acquisition, it means that the current Skopney submarine line at MDA will go to seed with the next set of 75 I-class being built in late 2030s with a fresh massive investment on submarine line. All this appears to be set for a change. In the meantime, the AE equipped submarines have been superseded by the latest soil class Japanese submarines with higher endurance lithium ion batteries with faster recharge capabilities. The lithium ion batteries have doubled the storage capacities of traditional lead acid batteries because of which the range of the submarine increases considerably. Given that the French has moved to nuclear propulsion and the German to lithium-ion technology ahead of e-submarine technology, the Modi government most likely will end up with a single vendor option with South Korea being the only country building e-submarines. Simply put, this means that by the time the Indian bureaucracy finalizes the vendor, the technology will be outdated and outclassed by the rapidly advancing Chinese PLA Navy. Prime Minister Narendra Modi took to Twitter to congratulate the team of RRR after the Telugu film fetched its first Golden Globes award on Wednesday. The film song Nata Nata made history as the winner of the Best Original Song category at the 80th Golden Globes. Composer M.M. Kirawani accepted it on stage. After the historic win, Prime Minister Modi reacted to a post shared by the official Twitter account of the film. He wrote in a tweet, A very special accomplishment. Compliments to Adam Kirawani, Prem Rukshit, Karl Arb Herowa, Chindra Bose, at Rahul Supligansh. I also congratulate at Siraj Mauli, at Arik 9999, at Always Ram Charan and the entire team of Atra Movie. This prestigious honor has made every Indian very proud. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind K. Triwarl also wrote to the team, Congratulations to the whole cast and crew of RRR on this fantastic achievement. 
there cannot be a prouder moment for our country than our art getting recognition in the highest global arenas. RRR was nominated in two categories for the Golden Globes Awards. While it won the Best Original Song for Natu Natu, it lost out in the Best Non-English Language Film category, which went to Argentina, 1985. The historic announcement was made by actor Jenna Ortega, who essayed the role of Wednesday Addams on Netflix's web series. At the award ceremony, director S.S. Raj Molly, Ram Charan, his wife Upasna Jr. NTR and his wife Lakshmi Praniti were present, alongside music composer M.M. Kirawani. This marks the cast and crew of RRR's first big Hollywood award ceremony together. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's goal of making India the world's factory risks being held back by the country's inability to attract bigger container ships due to inadequate port infrastructure. Most harbours along India's coast aren't deep enough to handle vessels like the Ever Arlote, the world's largest box ship at 400 metres long and with a capacity of more than 24,020 foot equivalent units. Neighbouring Sri Lanka as well as Malaysia have in recent months received visits from the Ever Arlote, which can rival the Empire State Building in length. India's biggest state-run container handling facility, Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust, lacks the 17-meter draft needed for such vessels to navigate. One facility that has said it can handle the behemoth, Mundra Port, operated by billionaire Gautam Adani's conglomerate, has so far been skipped. The 17,292 Teo APL Raffles is the biggest vessel to have birthed there, in January 2022 with 13,159 Teos on board. Ultra-large ships provide economies of scale, said Shelesh Gurg, a director at Drury Maritime Advisors. However, increasing the vessel size alone will not help in speeding up the movement of goods to and from the hinterland. Road and rail links from ports to warehouses, factories and shops also need to be improved, he said. Poor shipping connectivity has hindered India's integration into the global value chain, according to a Reserve Bank of India report in 2022. The country scored 34% in the GVC participation index compared to 45.9% for the 10-member Association of Southeast Asian Nations, the RBI said. Vietnam was above 50% in the gauge, according to a separate report. Bharat Pay co-founder Rashanir Grover has shed some light in his new startup, Third Unicorn. In a LinkedIn post, Grover, who announced the startup on his 40th birthday in June last year, gave a sneak peek of the new venture, and said a team of maximum 50 people will work in the company. On completing five years in the company, employees will be gifted a Mercedes Sure Seeds, he added. Let's get some work done in 2023. We at Third Unicorn have been quietly and peacefully building a market-shaking business. Bootstrapped. Without limelight. And we are doing things differently. Very differently. So if you want to be part of the next Toru, Foru thing, here's a sneak peek on how we are building. What we are building remains the billion-dollar question. Wrote the former shark in his LinkedIn post. The entrepreneur asked venture capitalists, VCs to stay away from investing in Third Unicorn, adding that the startup will not have any board shod. The company, he said, is for those who want to build big shig. People interested in coming on board can drop a mail on team at thirdunicorn.com. In March 2022, Grover resigned as managing director of Bharat Pay. He has been very active on social media in recent months and his autobiography, a book titled Dog Garpin was released in December. You were listening to the HD Daily News Wrap, a beta production brought to you by HD Smartcast. Please give us feedback on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at HD Smartcast or via email to podcasts at hindustantimes.com. Until next time. This was a Hindustan Times production brought to you by HD Smartcast. HD Smartcast